welcome back to another video. I'm telling you, these farms around here, they just don't stop. These guys have been working on tile work and spraying and putting in cover crops and I mean, just all kinds of stuff. I mean, every single time I've been down here, these guys have not stopped working on stuff. It's just, uh, it's just crazy to me how much time these guys really sink into their ground. Even when it's the off season, they just don't stop. So hopefully guys are all doing great. I'm on my way right now to one of my properties. We're gonna go and hang out at the property I was at yesterday. We're gonna do a couple of different things over there. We might do a little bit more talking on the topic of what I actually paid for my ground and break it down for you guys, for the people that were very interested. Realize that I cut out the part where I was talking about how much I paid for my property and the down payment and the payments and stuff like that to try to explain it to you guys to, to really make it click with how possible it is for everyday people to just you know get started in something like this. I was gonna do a little bit of a Q&A in the video regarding some topics that maybe some people just really want answered, maybe some questions people are just curious curious about and they just wanted to know a little bit more on doing a little bit of a look around the King Ranch I know a lot of you guys haven't seen a lot about this truck unless you're a long time subscriber or fan we haven't really showed a whole lot on the King Ranch for quite some time so this truck I'm just gonna go over basically the mileage what's been done to it etc you guys can kind of just kind of take it in check it out so this truck is a 2013 if you recognize the badge it's a King Ranch the truck has the more like the reddish brownish saddle leather it's all worn out from being used but not ripped steering wheel's been all smooth and out it's all shiny and stuff all weathered truck's got 108,000 miles on it i mean the truck's held up really well smoked mirror lenses smoked headlights i did that for my dad a while back i got him a set of smoked headlights some tail lights some lenses cab lights. Didn't do the fog lights, so I should have done that. <laughs> the truck has a four inch turbo back exhaust. And then from the DPF back, it's a five inch. It sounds really, really good. Truck's riding on a four inch zone lift, 35 by 1250 NATO tires and some 20 by 10 hostile alphas. Got a McTuning light bar he threw in there. And let me show you under the hood here. So this truck, so he's got a pusher intake kit under here <clears throat> and it's everything. It's got your cold air intake here with your new filter. Got that white pipe up on top. It bypasses a lot of stuff and it really, really, really helps with spooling and cooling and all that stuff. It's, it's awesome. Could use a cleaning. Hasn't been wiped down under here since we installed those parts. <laughs> the only complaint that I would say that we've had with this truck, turbo actually just failed. I mean, it was just toast. He was driving it down the road. It was real, real cold. And I think it was like in the negative 20s or 30s. It was pretty, pretty brutal out. Everybody was broke down everywhere. Semis were all around the roads, just not running. And his truck just went from like running fine to just nothing. If it does actually blow and you're still running it like that and you don't know that it's completely blown yet, you can take out your entire engine and then you're then you're really in a hole. Got the turbo swapped out. That's actually a 2017 Super Duty Turbo on this truck. Spools a little faster, holds up better. Just overall a better, better turbo for the truck. That's the overall rundown on this truck. Other than that, he's never had any transmission issues. He's never had any issues, anything other than the turbo, really. I mean, other than that, it's been a really, really great truck. So we're actually gonna walk through a little bit of my property here again. And I'm gonna show you another part of it that I didn't show you much of in the other video. I mean, there's plenty that you probably didn't see. We just kind of walked through and you only saw about my head and my shoulders. But I was gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about the property. Go into more of the specifics on what I paid, what my down payment was, what my payments are on this particular piece. This isn't like a, it's not like a weird flex. It's not like the property was some crazy half million dollar property. So it's like a big deal that I could put the money down. It's really not. The reason I'm wanting to share it is because it's a property that is in the price range and budget that most everyday guys could afford to do this. And that's why I wanted to share it to kind of help people have like an eye-opening experience and kind of go like, wow, I could do this very soon, realistically. That's why I'm wanting to share it. There's another old white oak tree. Another huge, huge, huge tree. I mean, this tree is... It's a monster too. Not a, not near as big as that other one, but it's an old tree. And here's something else that I never even looked at. He said there was like a spot where they started to dig a foundation for a basement for a home, but they stopped. But I'm guessing this is it. A big chunk of wood in there though. It's a big log just left in here to rot. Um, but this is kind of cool. 
We could turn this into a little pond here pretty easily, I bet. I bet you could get a backhoe in here, dig this thing out, and fill it up with some water. Both the properties are very similar in price, and I'm gonna go over why I purchased the properties that I did, and I really think that I had good reason to buy the ones that I did. The first property that I bought was in Ohio, and it was a property that was right on the outskirts of a town, and it was for sale. Half of the property was within a floodplain, and the other half was not. Why would I do that? Well, the property was super, super, super cheap. $1,900 an acre. The going rate for the ground on average around there, assuming all the ground was not in floodplain, is four or $5,000 an acre. So I got the property for essentially half of what the average going rate was for ground in that particular location. I didn't have a lot of time to think about it, but I thought, man, if this property is going for almost half the going rate, like how could it be a bad investment? You know, cause I could buy the ground, even if I'm like, I'm at a pinch, I got to dump it. Or let's say everything's going all fine. And I'm just like, you know what? I really just don't need this property anymore. I got a different one, a bigger one, a closer one, or I move out of town. It would be an easy property to sell. And that really is what was happening. That really was true to the situation because the property was for sale and we had our offer in within five days, not this one, my other property. And within that amount of time, they took told me that they accepted my offer and they said, just so you know, there were eight offers on this property, yours being one of them, half of them were cash offers. So this is a super, super desirable little piece of ground and it's 26 acres and I got it for $1,900 an acre. And it's just unbelievable how good of a deal it was for that location. And it's really close to town and I think that's why so many people were trying to buy it because they're like, I don't care if half of it's in floodplain, half of it's not, you know, which is 13 acres of the ground, give or take, to where they could build, put a small barn on it or whatever, tucked back in the woods. And it could be a really, really nice place for somebody. It was just super cheap. I mean, it would have been like buying that was like equivalent to like buying a half acre lot to build a house on in that area. To me, it was a no brainer. I'm like, this is just ridiculous. Of course, we're gonna put an offer on it, $100 over just to make sure we can seal the deal. We got the property and it was, and it was uh, all fine and dandy. Now this property, I'll go into more of the specifics since we're on this particular piece. This property is, I'm not gonna give you the exact location with either of these, just for my own personal privacy and safety. But this property is not terribly far from a town. There's a big town that's heavily populated, probably within 20 minutes. So it's not like absurd out of the way, like out in the middle of nowhere, but it's far enough from town to where it's it's more feasible, but it's not so far out of town that nobody's ever gonna wanna be interested in it because nobody's close enough to buy it, to enjoy it, to wanna build and have to commute 20 minutes to work, etc. It's a very good property for that reason. Like somebody was planning on buying a house here and then life happens, change of plans, no longer building a house, sold the property. This property would be great for somebody like that. You know, I'm not hoping that I sell it to somebody who wants to build on it and stuff, but for me, I'm like, okay, I have family like two minutes away. It's in a location that we're gonna visit often. It's super cheap. And with this property, it's more expensive than the one that I bought in Ohio in terms of per acre. It's 10 acres and it was $4,000 an acre. So we paid $40,000 for the property. And this is where it comes into play when I'm saying this is very reasonable and very feasible for a lot of even younger people that aren't like, you know, super wealthy. They haven't figured out everything in life yet. Maybe they don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank, but this property was only $8,000 down, 20% down, 20 year financing. And so it was $8,000 down and our payments on this are about, I want to say they were like 182 or $192 a month. And the taxes, I think he said, were under $500 a year on the property. You know, when you do the math on that, it's like, okay, so literally for this property, outgoing expenses on average are less than 220, 230 bucks a month. That's super feasible for a lot of people. That's under, well under three, thousand dollars a year to be able to own this ground and so when i look at that i'm thinking okay well i know plenty of younger guys that are dumping you know seven eight ten twelve fifteen thousand bucks on you know a pickup truck an old truck that don't necessarily need the truck but they're kind of wondering what they want to do what they want to you know, do to make a bunch of money long-term, you know, towards retirement age or whatever. And I know it's kind of a daunting thing to think about sometimes. Like, you know, I don't want to think about what I'm going to do when I'm in my 50s, 60s, so on. But it's it's worth considering thinking about that because most people aren't. And just because they aren't thinking about it doesn't mean they shouldn't be. And this is a piece of ground that I might buy now for 40, but there's a very, very good chance that this property is worth, let's say, 140 in 30 years from now. 
I'm not saying that that's a science and it's factual and that's what's gonna happen, but I'm saying it could happen. And I know for a fact it's gonna sell for more than 40, which is what I paid for it today. Today being this day and age, my current time, my current part of life, you know, it might be impossible to find something like this in your area, but I know for a fact that, um, I can't be the only one that can find good deals on properties. There's gotta be more places like this, you know, all across the country that are close to your areas where you might be. And um, I know there's guys that are like, oh, well, there's no way I could get ground for that cheap around me. You know, it's 10,000 an acre around me. It's 20,000, it's 30,000. Well, if you go 30 minutes away, ground's 20,000 an acre. You go 15 minutes the opposite way, ground's $10,000 an acre. So. It's just, you gotta find those little sweet spots that are close enough to where if you had to sell it, there's civilization close enough to where somebody would be like, oh, that's only 20 minutes from where I work or from where I live now. I would buy it for recreation or I'd buy it to build on it. You know, it's gotta be somewhat reasonable, but not right on top of everybody where you're gonna pay top dollar. I'm gonna start the truck up cause it's a little bit cold out. So we're gonna go through and do a few questions here. I don't have a lot of them. Didn't really give everybody a huge heads up, but we're gonna do a quick little question answer do I prefer a single rear wheel truck or a dually truck what I like the look of more big stanced out dually it just looks bad coming down the road at you I don't exceed the needs for a dually there's just something super cool about them Dale Mills underscore 5.9 what are your plans for the future of Loud and Proud? This is a very good question. This really could be a very, very, very deep answer if I really wanted to go into thorough, thorough detail. It can be hard to get past your mind what you're truly capable of and what you think you're capable of. I was telling my wife this this morning, I said, hey, there's no reason why I can't make a video five or six days a week like I used to when I had no money, I had nothing going on. I mean, I had like, like, I was just hungry. I just wanted to be one of the biggest diesel YouTube channels. Like that was my original goal. And I thought like I truly convinced myself I can do that. You know, for a while there, I was actually, my channel was growing like crazy. I mean, we were going three, four, 500, 600 subscribers a day. Like it was just nuts. Like it was on fire. My views were higher and everything else, but I posted every single day. I mean, it was, it was crazy. And when you post every day, you just draw more attention to you, you draw more attention to what you're doing, what, what you have going on. The channel just grew like wildfire, you know, as time goes on, if you kind of lose that spark, it can be very, very easy to do a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. That's very challenging and that's why a lot of people don't start their own businesses and grow them is because it, it's, it really is, it's a mental game. It's not hard to do, it's only hard to do if you limit yourself here and that's the biggest catch for people. But to answer your question, I'd like to post five days a week for Loud and Proud on the channel. I'd like to get back to that schedule of actually posting consistently like super ambitious, just go at it. And I'd like to grow the brand to more than just clothing. I'd like it to be more like more usable items and actual truck accessories and like all kinds of crazy stuff. I'd like to actually grow the, the store beyond what it is now. That's my goal that I'd like to do if I can push harder. That's what I'd like to do is really expand the brand beyond just like uh, clothing items, stuff like that, and really grow it more into more usable things, more options, more things that like people would come back again and again and again to get because it's something that they actually want or need or have to have almost like this feeling like they got to have it versus like, do I really want to buy another shirt this month? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Isaac Amberman question. He had a couple questions. Actually, he's got a handful. Do you find that certain giveaway trucks are more profitable than others? And why are they for my channel? Because I've always started out with that. That's what I was, I've always done. Um, my audience likes the older trucks more. His next question, what happened to the lawn care company? The lawn care company was something that we ran for one summer. Then after that, it was a pain in the butt to manage. People would show up when they wanted to show up. They would just not show up when they didn't want to show up. And it just ticked me off. And it was really hard at the time to find anybody else willing to do it that could do the hours that we needed them to do. And so it just ended up being more of a burden than a good business thing. Got past it, didn't really care anymore at this point. So I was like, yeah, whatever. What other businesses are you interested in starting? Oh man, I'd like to expand upon the Brotherhood Outdoor stuff, the outdoors channel, the outdoors industry area, whether it's filming hunts, selling tree stands, selling camo, making our own camo line stuff along the lines of that. I would actually love to expound upon that idea. I feel like that's something that I'm super passionate about and I should just do, and which is why I buy ground and everything else is because 
I love the outdoors. I love hunting. I love fishing. I love, you know, just being out in the woods and just literally hanging out around the trees. Like I freaking love that crap. And I just feel like if I started something like that and I could really efficiently do it, once I get loud and proud more sorted out, because we've made some big changes lately that we've had to adapt to, once I can get loud and proud more streamlined to where, you know, we've got it more down to a rhythm, I would love to expound upon that business idea, honestly. What type of real estate do you plan on buying or have already bought? I've already bought properties, um, vacant ground, you know, just woods, a little bit of field, stuff around this property. Um, the other property is just all wooded. Ready to get a nice house where we're at now. It's not that much ground, but it's mostly just a small farm. I'd like to expound upon more farm ground and more timber as I go. What I'd also like to do is get into rental real estate. Rental real estate as in like, you know, rental houses, small complexes, apartment complexes, stuff like that. Stuff along the lines of that for real estate just because it it's more of an income and a long-term investment. So it's compounding the value of the property over the years, but it also compounds a little bit faster because it's residential, not just vacant ground. For the most part, that's accurate, at least where we are. And you make money on top of the mortgage and expenses going out, even though it's not a lot, you make money on top of it as basically the tenants are paying for your property over the years. You know, you might have to put the initial down payment down, but over the years, as long as you can keep renters in there, they're essentially paying for your real estate. So when you go to sell in 15, 20 years, they paid for it and then you can sell it and essentially you can be set for life depending on how serious you take investing you know which is why one of the fastest and most proven ways to get super wealthy is through real estate that type of real estate more than vacant ground in most cases but that's definitely uh, an avenue i'd like to go as well here's a great question this is a really good question how do you keep yourself from becoming overwhelmed and stressed with everything you have going on this is a great question it's kind of a tough one to answer it's, it's something that has to be dealt with differently for everybody. Everybody has a different way of coping with things, with stress, with hard times, etc. For me personally, I can pretty well manage stress as long as I feel like I can remind myself and have the people around me that I love remind me why I'm doing what I'm doing. Just remember your goal. Just remember the mission. Remember what we're investing for. Remember what we're saving for. If I have people that can remind me of that stuff, it helps me go, okay, the problems that I'm having today are not that big of a freaking deal. Like it's petty stuff stuff. Just breathe, look around at life. Your life's not that bad. You've got to choose to be happy. You've got to choose to want what's best for you. You've got to choose to enjoy every day. But it really helps for me, honestly, when I verbally hear and feel the support from people around me, just letting me know like, yo, you got to remember why you're doing what you're doing. As soon as you forget why you're doing what you're doing, that's when you start to spiral out of control. That's when you start to go downhill. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. It was kind of, you know, there was there was some fun stuff. There was some really interesting stuff. And then there was some kind of deep stuff there. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Do not forget that if you want to enter, win our blue 1992 W250, our 12 valve first and comes with a five speed manual in it. You guys are running out of time. You guys got five days left and then that giveaway is gone. All you got to do is go to lmpgear.com, place an order on anything on the store. You can buy a hat a shirt, a hoodie, a beanie, whatever the heck you want. As soon as you check out, you're automatically entered. You do not have to have PayPal to check out. You do not have to have Amazon Pay to check out. When you check out through PayPal, when you go through the steps, they give you the option at the end to just use normal debit or credit card, or you can use a PayPal account, but you don't need to have one. You can just check out like you would normally. You just have to use PayPal as the way to get to that step. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoy the video. Links are in the description below to get entered. Catch you guys in the next video. Peace.